as a patient uh, in the medical cannabis industry as well as an operator in the medical cannabis industry, it's important that uh, people understand what the intentions are of the people who are operating these institutions. Um, and a lot of that has to do with where they're coming from. Hey, good morning. How are you doing? Good, how are you? Good, I'm just gonna need to see your ID. Second here. Right here. Thank you. What are you checking for right now? We're scanning you into the system to make sure that your uh, recommendation is up to date and that you're uh, registered with us. Okay, and you're all set to come back. Morning. 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 Very good. Welcome. Tell us who you are. My name is Carl. Welcome to Peace and Medicine. Peace and Medicine is a nonprofit mutual benefit corporation established in 2007. We're here to provide safe access to medical cannabis for the community of Sebastopol, California. So the way we have our dispensary set up is that we have um, products over here as well as free literature people can take. We have books and other literature here people can buy um, to anything to do with growing, to making um, edibles. Um, our display cases are set up exactly the same so that you can look at either one of them. And then we have registers. Um, we accept the Visa, MasterCard, um, as well as cash. And uh, we have different literature available for people to take, um, as well as we um, accept donations for Americans for Safe Access. Here is our clones that we have to offer. Most of our clones are $10 a piece. They're in soil. We also have them typically in rock wool as well. Um, they're available for any patient to, to buy. Um, Sonoma County law is that a patient can buy up to 30 clones in, in any given day. Um, our dispensary is set up to emulate a doctor's office feel and look. Um, which is very different than the traditional um, medical cannabis dispensary that people have been seeing on television and in the news. Um, so you can see we have a waiting area that people are allowed to go and sit and wait. Uh, it's open to the public. We uh, have all of our new patients come over here to member services. They sign in here. We process their records um, that, uh, so that we can get their medical um, verification done with their doctor's office. Uh, we um, <clears throat> also answer any of the questions about their membership as well as uh, they may ask about how they can provide any of their excess medicine to Peace and Medicine. Um, we provide all of that information here from this station. Uh, most patients will wait here in the lobby until there's room for them to go back into the dispensary. Um, this room over here is sometimes used as a meeting room as well as a treatment room. Um, we have therapy sessions that happen inside of here. Um, as well as we have other spaces outside of this building within the community, like at our community cultural center, we offer a lot of free classes over there from acupuncture to massage to other types of healing modalities um, and practices. Um, back here is where a lot of the back operations happen. Um, through this back door here is where all of the product acquisition happens. So when a patient comes in um, and uh, is been already vetted through our processes, they come back here to meet with our product specialist who sits here. And this is where they evaluate the medicine quality-wise, content, um, how it was grown, where it was grown. All those types of questions are discussed back here. Um, they review it using a microscope. Um, if we need to send it out for testing, all of that happens through this process back here. This is where we receive all our clones. Um, in the back of here as well. Um, as you can see, it can get a little messy with dirt and soil all the time. <clears throat> in this other room over here <clears throat> is where we do the, the product assembly. <clears throat> so if product is brought in through this other room here, this room here <clears throat> is where we put it all together. <clears throat> so this room back here is what we call one of our security areas. This is our way station here. 
This is our point of sale system. This is where our manager typically sits, direct access to the dispensary. So we do all of our packaging ourselves. So at the weigh station here, they weigh out the medicine, they pre-package it into eighths and grams, and then we weigh out uh, medicine for anyone looking for a half ounce, an ounce of medicine, and we weigh that out at this moment and bring it out to the front. Um, so all of that happens here when we get in edibles or tinctures from various patient providers. Um, that all comes in here, gets barcoded and sorted, and then and put into secured storage. Secured storage is back here. <clears throat> so as you can tell, every time I come to a door, I have to have a set of keys to get in. <clears throat> it's required for us in our ordinance that we have to keep everything secure um, and that we take everything, all of our medicine at the end of the day is brought back into this area here. We have a refrigerator for storage of our edibles and other perishable type of items. We have the, a big cart that we put all the medicine in that wheels in and sits right in here at the end of the day all the cash and other medicine go inside the safe. So from our operational area, as you can tell, when we weigh out medicine back here, it has to get out into the dispensary, and this is the access area to the dispensary. This is all of our information that we share with all of our um, employees, <clears throat> and then this is the back space where the patient consultants um, provide that service to the patients when they come into the um, dispensary here. All right, well, um, this is the most um, Type, this is the type of medicine most people will recognize. It's flowers um, in a bud form. Uh, this is strain name is lamb's bread. And we uh, talk about medicine, uh, about how it affects you. So we uh, give indicators like a heads up or body up or body down effect. And that allows people to know that whether the medicine is going to be affecting them on an, an upper level or a lower level of their body as well as whether the effect is going to be more sedating or more um, energetic. Um, <clears throat> we try to describe the medicine as on this card shows you where it was grown. We describe whether it was grown indoor or outdoor, whether it was grown in soil or hydroponically. We give you a little bit about the genetics, whether it's a sativa, indica, or any of the um, genealogy of the plant itself. Um, and we give a little more about the effects that we describe, as well as a price range. <clears throat> when we talk about price ranges, we have this color dot system that we use here, and each dot um, represents a different um, price range that we have here within um, Peace and Medicine. Um, the medicine comes in many different modalities, flowers being the, the primary modality that most everyone understands and knows about. <clears throat> the other thing that most people understand <clears throat> and know about is hash. So this is hash here, and the hash <clears throat> is a concentrated form of the flower, um, it, and it's extracted in various forms, whether it be through a solvent method or a, a solvent-free method or using water as a way to extract the uh, medical components that make up the hash um, <clears throat> for use. The other one would be an, a, a, a hash oil, <clears throat> and the hash oil, again, this one here, as you can see, it's not quite liquid. It's almost like a waxy type of material. This is done through a solvent-free method using um, freezing temperatures to freeze the plant matter and using sound as a way to vibrate those plant matters, uh, that plant uh, matter off of the plant itself. And that gives you this waxy material. So that's an oil. Um, again, it's a concentrated form of cannabis. <clears throat> and then what the other typical form of cannabis that people use in a modality form is an edible. This happens to be a small brownie type. Comes in various dose levels. We always recommend to patients um, when they uh, start to use edibles to always look at the dose level that's being prescribed by the person who's made it and always do it in half initially so that they understand truly what's going to happen to them once they've started to take the medicine. The thing about using an edible medicine um, is that once you've taken it, it's in your system and you have to get through that process. Um, so we always ask you to start small and then um, titrate yourself going forward. Um, the other modality that people like to use is capsules because um, it's easy to take, um, easy to travel with. These capsules happen to be made out of an olive oil infusion and then their, um, the shake is added to that and then they're packed in these capsules. Again, you can take any from one to two of these capsules as a typical dose. Um, taking this with tea or some other hot liquid is always um, effective as well. 
The other type of modality that people um, like for um, the use of cannabis is tinctures. Tinctures can come in a, a, a couple of different ways. They can come in a glycerin base, an agave or plant extract base, or an alcohol extract base. These happen to be alcohol extract base. And you can see here that we offer our tinctures not just in straight cannabis infusion, but also with other herbs that help provide um, other relief uh, for symptoms and conditions patients may have. This one happens to have uh, Corydalis and California poppy in it to help with deep uh, sleep and uh, pain relief. So about seven years ago, I went through my own cancer treatment. And for me, it was you know, quite an adjustment um, for me. But what helped me get through my cancer treatment, um, I was living in Southern California at the time, um, was that friends from up here in Northern California drove down to bring me cannabis to help me get through that treatment process. I have successfully made it through that process. I'm seven years into my remission, if you want to call it that. Um, but uh, for me, four years ago, when that same group of people who brought me that medicine um, asked me if I wanted to come help create a dispensary here in Sebastopol, California, I said yes. I left my 20 plus year corporate America job um, and career um, to come here because I felt it was important that I was able to provide a way in which people would be able to improve their quality of life while they're going through the, the serious illnesses that they may be going through. And for me, I knew what it meant for me um, having access to this medicine while I was going through my treatment. And I know the benefit people will get um, when they go, they're going through their treatment. So. I left corporate America because I wanted to give something back to the people who gave me something to help me um, through one of my serious illnesses. Here in Sebastopol, uh, Sebastopol is a small city of about seven to 8,000 people, um, but it serves a wider community of about 50 to 60,000 people in the overall county area that um, goes towards the coastline of California. Um, we're a very community-based organization here, and that's also reflective of the community here in Sebastopol. There's a lot of community involvement here in Sebastopol, um, from sustainability, slow food movement, to um, ecological, environmental types of things. Um, so one of the hardest parts about being a medical cannabis dispensary is finding a location, okay? And here in Sebastopol, we happen to be in a very unique place because it's not a industrial complex. It's not in a back alley. It's actually on the main road in Sebastopol as you come into town and it's in a shopping center with other businesses from a restaurant to a coffee shop to a massage parlor to a hair salon. Um, they're all next door to us. So we operate within that community structure. So for us it was very important for us to establish great community relations when we be started down that process of becoming a medical cannabis dispensary. So we did a lot of community outreach and uh, that is very important for us to be that connected to our community. And um, part of that is that the process that you have to go through in order to be provided a use permit for medical cannabis dispensary is to go through a public hearing process where the community can give you their reaction about you providing this access to this medicine. Um, so we wanted to be prepared for that and to involve the community members to understand what their needs are and what their dislikes are about this medicine and the culture that it may bring or may uh, insinuate. Um, Some of the hardest parts about operating a medical cannabis dispensary is the dichotomy that exists between the federal government and the state governments. And so for us uh, also that we're taking an industry basically and a movement from the dark of night or the black market if you want to call it that, okay, and we're taking it to, to the day of light, to the real marketplace. Um, and, but we have to do it under certain restrictions. In California, we're required to be nonprofit entities and to operate as nonprofit entities. We also have government oversight as part of our requirements. The city of Sebastopol, the leaders, can come and see any of our books, 
and how we operate at any time they wish to request. So we always have someone looking over our shoulder and we need to perform that way knowing that that's what's going to happen and could happen. We also have to operate in an environment where we are trying to create a safe environment for patients who have a lot of fear coming here, but we also have to be prepared for the next federal interaction that might happen. So we have to provide everyone that, that information, the education, so that they can respond to those things in the most professional and educated way as possible. So we conduct raid trainings, which allow people to know how to interact with law enforcement if they so choose to come here to our dispensary. Um, we also have to work through a lot of issues that other businesses don't have to work through. Landlords not wanting to rent to you, wanting to charge you extra money for that, for that rent because of the risk. Um, there's also, you know, whether that be insurance services, insurance companies don't even know how to evaluate the risk of a medical cannabis dispensary or any of the other operations that go along with it, growing, cultivating, manufacturing, producing products. Um, there's no way to assess that. So we're always on the bleeding edge of moving this movement forward, um, and it's a lot of work to make that happen. And there's a lot of unknowns. Um, people just don't know. And a lot of it has to do with that there still is this dichotomy between the federal government and the state governments around this particular plant. Um, okay. Two to three years ago, the federal government was making a presence known about their dislike for this movement by issuing uh, letters to landlords, letting them know that they could uh, lose their property if they rent or lease uh, property to the medical cannabis industry. Well, the same thing's happening now, um, but on the banking or the financial institution side of things. Most banks are being threatened by the federal government at some level in some way. Uh, if it's not directly, it's indirectly. Um, by telling them that um, by providing services like credit card services or just simple banking services to the medical cannabis industry is something that they don't want them to do. So we've had to go out and find new providers of those services in you know, less than a week's notice that our current provider is going to drop us and have to go out and scramble to make that happen so that we don't suffer and our customers don't suffer for having that service no longer here. Um, just two months ago, we had to go and find new credit card processors and went a whole week without having that service available to our patients um, because they didn't have, we didn't have that uh, ability to provide that service. It's very real and a lot of it is, is just policymakers trying to follow their policy, i.e. the federal policy, and then state regulators trying to follow their state guidelines. And where they meet is where these contentions start to happen. Excellent.